G'day, g'day, and welcome back. Here we have the true pelvis, a fetching shade of magenta. So this title is in contrast to the false pelvis, which I'll bring in there. So it's got borders at the anterior superior iliac spine and the lumbar vertebra. And considering that all the important pelvic anatomy is in this area, this is obviously of the two, the false pelvis, fake pelvis, not the true pelvis. So moving on, let's talk about the entry and exit points to the true pelvis, which we call the pelvic inlet and the pelvic outlet. Most posteriorly, we have the promontory of the sacrum. Next, the ala of the sacrum, which is Latin for wings. The arcuate line, arcuate meaning curved. Pectineal line, attachment for pectineus. The pubic symphysis, and the same on the other side. Pectineal line, arcuate line. Ala of sacrum and promontory of sacrum. So this marks the superior border of the true pelvis. If we look around the other side now, let's talk about the pelvic outlet. Pubic symphysis, ischiopubic ramus, ischial tuberosities, and we'll just take another angle to draw this back part in. Sacrotuberous ligament down the back, coccyx, another sacrotuberous ligament, another ischial tuberosity, left ischiopubic ramus and back to the pubic symphysis. The shape of the pelvic outlet varies quite a lot between men and women or male and female sex. It's notably bigger in females because we have to fit a whole baby through here. So before we wrap up, brief mention should go to the other prominent foramen in the pelvis. This is the obturator foramen here. And then the two foramina bordered by these ligaments. This is the greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic foramen. They're named after the greater and lesser and lesser down there, sciatic notches, which they relate to, okay? So I mentioned the sacrotuberous ligament before. Get rid of that. Show you this is the sacrospinous ligament. They both serve to stabilize the bony pelvis. So if we take a step back now, it's, uh, it becomes clear how important orientation is when it comes to anatomy. You've got to be able to reason through the arrangement and the relationships between the nearby structures in your head, if possible, to imagine how it all fits into life. And one important thing to note in that regard, uh, and with this model, is the relationship of the pelvis to the coronal plane. So we have a unique opportunity here to show you that in 3D. So here's the coronal plane, and as you can see, the ASIS, or the anterior superior iliac spine, and the pubic tubercles line up with it precisely. So if you're handling uh, the, some pubic bones in anatomy class, just remember that. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of that, and we shall see you next time.